Right, we are off. Oh my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. Breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. Can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clippers out, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Oh. So you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. My precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my dog. <laughs>On today's show, we'll see just how many people are involved in rescuing a dog, from the person who makes that first call right through to the vet and the animal centre staff who make each dog's recovery possible. Joining me is Boris. He was rescued from appalling conditions where he wasn't being looked after properly, but the team here have been taking care of him for almost a year, and with his case now closed, he's ready to find a new home. Come on, Boris. Boris, come on. Coming up. Come on, come on, come on, beautiful girl. A life-changing rescue for Collie Cross's Tippy and Custard. Calm down, <laughs> calm down, <laughs> calm down. She just literally nibbled herself. Red roll right in front of me. There, you can see that. Oh, Nilly. The fight to save Nala, a collapsed Shih Tzu. It's just absolutely... Skin and bone in you. And the amazing transformation of Bridget. Good girl, Bridget. Good girl. One of 27 poodles caged in a house. <laughs> Look at them now, it's totally different. Yeah. It's late afternoon on Merseyside, and Inspector Anthony Joins has one more job to attend to. We just responded to a complaint that I've had come in about, um, was mentioned to two dogs that uh, I've got really bad skin. A lot of the issues with fair loss and red raw skin and inf secondary infection is self-harm. It's the dogs, you know, they don't like having parasites on them, but, you know, and you can understand why, and they scratch themselves. So it's, it's not acceptable at all because it's so obvious and it's so easily treated and so easily avoidable. Anthony's had three separate reports about skin issues with the dogs at this address, so he knows it must be serious. Hello? I've had a complaint about the dogs, I just need to come and see them. Hello. I, I basically had a job come through saying concerns about the two dogs. You know, you walk into a situation where these dogs are red raw, the fur's gone, there's pus, and the smell from some of these skin conditions is awful. Really distinctive smell, and I don't know how you could live in that. I, I, it just amazes me. We have got a problem with the condition of them. They're suffering, aren't they, from, from a, quite a bad skin complaint? It stinks. It's like, you know, it's like secondary infection on the skin. The owner admits that one of the dogs has been ill for a few weeks, but says that she's been treating them. The problem is you go into a house and you, you ask a few initial questions, you get told one thing, but ultimately the animals are, are there in front of you don't lie. And it's at that point that you, you step in and, and do what you need to do. Allow me to take them to the vet. And if the vet gives me an opinion that they cause suffering, right, then they'll go to one of our centres, right? And then I, I will come back and do an interview with you and your partner. The owner is reluctant to sign the dogs over. They need urgent care, don't they? But agrees to Anthony's terms. 
Come on, come on, come on, beautiful girl. Come on. It was last time you walked. It's nearly dark by the time the first dog is out. Twelve-year-old custard. Right. All right. All right. Just calm down. Calm down. Just calm down. Calm down. Calm down. She's just scared, isn't she? Um, tail tucked right between her legs. She's obviously got extensive fur loss. She's an old collie cross type. She just literally nibbled herself. Red wall right in front of me. There, look. You see that? There. It's whatever it is, it's really, really itchy. Um, I'm causing her quite a lot of discomfort, so. Come here, girl. Come here. Please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. Oh, there you go. Don't be too stressed. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Look, it's dark in there, it's nice. It's a very stressed lesson. Come on, Tippy. Walkies. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. The second dog is 13 year old Tippy. Her coat is in an even worse state. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, Tippy. Come on, Tippy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Extensive fur loss again, but really crusty back end. Um, extensively long claws. Come on, Tippy. Come on, Tippy. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You stressed. Quite a distressed owner, but quite unacceptable what I found in there as well, as what we saw. They've both got extensive fur loss. Um, she says she's got no money, she's been evicted. Um, but ultimately, you know, you have animals, you, it, it's your responsibility to get them looked after. And she's obviously failed these two quite badly. Anthony's hoping that vet Holly Jones can fit two more dogs into her busy schedule. Hello? Hello? Hiya. Are you coming back here? Can you hear that noise? Yeah. yeah. Once they're under the lights at the surgery, we'll find out just how serious their skin infections are. It's early evening on Merseyside, and Anthony Joins has just rescued two dogs with extensive fur loss. Come on. And by the looks of things, they're both stressed. Oh, look at that kennel. What have you done? Rolling around in her own poo, I think. Yeah. That'll teach me for rescuing you, won't it? She's a good girl. Oh, she's a beautiful girl. She's a good girl. Oh, yes, well done. Oh. Vet Holly Jones has made time to see the dogs, and first to be checked over is Custard. Oh, a bit crazy. Um, Hello. This is Custard. Hello, darling. Hi. One of the two that I've just removed, so. Um, <laughs> I had a quick look at her in the house, which was a bit chaotic, but I, I couldn't notice any. She obviously got quite severe skin issue. Um, You've got pooey feet. I didn't notice any fleas or flea dirt, so I, I was suspecting it might be something more mighty. No, there's no flea dirt there, that's for sure. Oh. Okay, should we get some scrapes from you? Mites are the most obvious culprits for custard skin condition. Let's pop her up then. We're just taking some samples of the skin, all layers of the skin, all the way down through the epidermis so that we can try and find those mites. Hey, Good girl. A lot of these mites like to burrow in the hair follicles, so we have to spray it nice and deep. Yeah, It tends to feel quite nice for them. I've got you, I've got you. Holly takes two skin samples. Sadly, there are plenty of irritated areas to choose from. You can see where she's been itching over there, can't you, as well? Like scratching. Yeah. And there's like little, see there's like scabs there as well. It looks as if custard could have sarcoptic mange, which is highly contagious. And you can see where it's starting to go, can't you, down the legs here? Yeah, it's spreading all the way out, down. In and out. Okay, shall I swap over? Yeah. Good. Custard must be so sore and itchy, but things are even more extreme for her pal Tippy. Her skin is much worse because she's got this yellow discoloration yeah. over the top of it. Does that suggest a more more chronic? Of it, yeah. yeah. When they get damaged skin, either bacteria or yeast will overgrow as a result of the skin being traumatized. 
it's quite visible to anyone that this dog has a skin condition. So they can't right, say they didn't know. Obvious I know. You can see the way it all, it's oh, all yeah. thickened. You can see the yellow discoloration. She needs Malaseb baths for that skin and again, the mite treatment. So both dogs were suffering from quite a severe skin condition, which is most likely due to mites. So we've taken some skin scrapes from both of them so we can have a look and see if we can identify those mites. As well as medicated baths, they'll need a quick working tablet to kill the mites. Tippy will also be given a course of steroids and antibiotics. It's certainly going to take about six weeks for their coats to look better and for the new coat to start growing through. So it's, it's going to be a slow process for them. Let's go. In here. Uh, in there. In there. Come on. Well, it's my job now to get her taken into possession um, under the Animal Welfare Act, which will be either a police officer or a local authority inspector, and then they can hand them over to us. Because I don't, I don't want them going back. Let's go. We'll catch up on Tippy and Custer's recovery later. See you in a minute. All right. Tippy and Custard are in safe hands now, but in Tyne and Weir, there's another dog in need of help. Hello. Hi, Jackie. It's Jody from Tusken A3 Stark. Yeah, go ahead. It's late afternoon, and Inspector Jackie Miller is close to the end of her shift. We've got an emergency complaint coming through of a young dog. It's at uh, the Vets for Pets in South Shields. Jackie calls the vets for more information. Hello, it's Jackie from the RSPCA. Hi, we've got a, a little puppy in after his skin and bone. Right. He's made it, he, he can't even stand up. And Jeez, and what is he? He's a shih tzu. He's only one year old. <gasps> Well, I will be with you ASAP. If a vet has called me, there's got to be a really good reason why, you know? So, yeah, it's always going to be a bad one if a vet called you with a concern. No worries. The little Shih Tzu was found by a member of the public on a residential street, staggering and disorientated. Oh, Lily. And since she came in, she's gone further downhill. She has a microchip, but so far, Jackie's been unable to trace her owner. Hello? Is there anything on the chip with a name? She's called Nala. Little Nala is in a very bad way. It looks as if she's been wandering the streets for days. What's a mystery is if she's been dumped or just strayed from home. We've tried feeding her, but then she didn't want the food. We've tried to force feed her, and she's not having it. Her temperature's normal. Um, right. She's having probably problems, difficulties breathing. Oh, sweetie. She's just... This is just absolutely skin and bone, isn't she? For now, all the vet can do is put Nala on a drip and make sure she's kept warm. So the vet says I've got to give you this. Hmm? I've got to hug you in. Get you nice and warm, eh, little one? You've just got no life in you at all, have you? Hmm? All wrapped up. She's not a well doggy. She's not how you would want to see a one-year-old puppy react, really. You know, they should be, well, bounding around like an absolute idiot, especially a little crazy shih tzu. Nala's had blood tests, which so far haven't shown up anything specific but the vet is still very concerned. I think we have to be realistic and give a poor prognosis. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can turn things around, certainly to get her hydrated and we can get a decent meal into her. And is that something that we need to do by like syringe feeding us? Yeah. Every few hours? Every few hours. But there's a problem. Nala requires round-the-clock care, which they can't provide here, so she needs to be moved somewhere that can. I think in transportation, is she suitable for it? It's not ideal, but if it's her best chance, she needs to go on sedation tonight, absolutely. She's not going to make it without it. I'll get on that one. Okay. Luckily, Jackie's managed to find another surgery close by that will take Nala for the night. I've never really had to move an animal this ill t before, to be honest. Um, I'm a little bit apprehensive, but obviously the vets advise that it's the best thing for her. 
It's extremely touch and go whether or not she's even going to last till midnight. Right, better get going. All Jackie can do is hope for the best and get Nala to the 24-hour vets as soon as possible. You don't really get many cases throughout the year. That's this sort of touch and go. The problem is these are the ones that pull on your heartstrings. You just want them to pull through so much. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible driving. I just, I've got a horrible feeling in my stomach when I get there. She's not going to be with us. It's an anxious moment for Jackie. Hello, little Oh, we've got a head lift. <gasps> Good girl. But thankfully, Nala is still with us. Good girl, Nala. One bag of fluid, one dog. Her condition can now be closely monitored. It's been a hell of a day. Just when you think you're on your way home to finish, you get called to a collapsed, emaciated, young Shih Tzu. That's just the most beautiful little thing. And to see her in such a dire state, it's just, it's just really upsetting. Let's hope little Nala can hang on in there. Poor little Nala. It's awful to see her in such a sorry state. Now, it's easy to see if a dog's suffering when it's left outside, especially if it doesn't have access to food and water or somewhere to shelter. But inspectors also come across dogs that have been kept inside without exercise or fresh air and very little contact with the outside world, which creates its own issues. A few months ago in Cornwall, Inspector Lewis Taylor was working alongside the police on a disturbing case. A large number of poodles were being kept in one house. Downstairs was a very small kitchen, which, as soon as we walked in, we were just met with, you know, a sight that was bewildering, really. <laughs> you know, 5K just contained 21 dogs. As though they'd been, I don't know, stuck, packed and racked like, like items, like belongings, and not treated as, you know, individual beings. There was another, another six dogs, which were all confined to just one, one room upstairs. Uh, so 27 dogs in one very small house. So it was just a, an absolutely pitiful sight, really. My heart just really went out to them because they just, they just looked like they had spent so long inside those cages. Uh, they just seemed absolutely petrified. It appeared to me that they'd probably never seen the light of day outside that house. 11 of the 27 poodles were brought to Brent Knoll Rescue Centre. One of the most nervous of them, four-year-old Bridget, is now being looked after by Andy Cook, a behavioural specialist who's working on regaining her trust. Come on, then. She's a little bit of a worried character, a little bit more apprehensive than some of the others. Too much. We will never know how much Bridget suffered at the house, but she's gradually getting better. There you go. So I just start giving her a little tickle on her chin, if she'll let me, because then that'll lead me towards being able to attach the lead. Good girl. So, there you go. Don't want that. And his patience eventually pays off. Good girl, Bridget. Today, Bridget is going to get another opportunity to say hello to the inspector who rescued her under much happier circumstances. Hi, Andy, all right? Hiya. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Hello. Hey, girl. Is this Bridget? Yeah, little oh, Bridget. Wow. Brilliant. She looks quite different from the last time you saw her. Yeah, she does, actually. She looks resembling more of a poodle. Yeah. And, um, and I could, you know, tell she's still a little bit sort of nervous, but so much better than yeah, the yeah. night we picked them up. So fantastic. But we're just hoping to start introducing her to some new people now. So, uh, being as though she hasn't seen you for a little while. Yeah, that's it. No better time. Oh, that's better. Good girl. Nervous Bridget looks pretty relaxed with Lewis already. OK, off you go, Bridget. There you go.
but it's when she's with her poodle pals that she really comes to life. Do you? Yeah. No. So look at them now, it's totally different. Yeah. Hey girl, Bridge. Girl. Hello. Yeah, Bridget, I see you so look at her now. She's so much, so much more confident when she's got her friends to back her up. Aren't you? Look. Girl. And you, yeah. It's been really nice to see them coming out of their shells today and running around and being dogs and playing with each other, being mischievous, being in trouble, jumping all over us. The owner of the Poodles was found guilty of causing unnecessary suffering and banned from owning dogs for 10 years. She was also given a six-week custodial sentence suspended for a year. She's lodged an appeal. Hello, monkey! <laughs> coming up... Nala, the little shih tzu, continues her fight for life. I don't want to give up on her. I think uh, we've got some decent chances mm -hmm. of getting her back to normal. And there's a big change in Tippy and Custard. Good girl. Good girl. Last night, Inspector Jackie Miller rescued a gravely ill Shih Tzu called Nala and rushed her off for emergency treatment. I haven't really slept just thinking about her, whether or not she's still trying to fight. Nala's now being cared for by Alison Kinnear and her colleagues at their surgery in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. As she's dangerously underweight, Nala's being fed little and often through a tube. She wasn't doing this yesterday. Um, she seems to be a little bit more responsive. Little Nala has a microchip, but so far her owner hasn't been located. Get me a little one. Let's feel your tummy. Alison thinks she knows why Nala is so weak. You know, she is a young dog, so we've got to consider is there any congenital problems going on. So certainly these little fellas you know, can often get liver shunts. What is a liver shunt? Liver shunt is a problem with the, the vascular system. So instead of all the blood that drains from your, your pancreas, your small intestine, spleen, it should go into the liver, get metabolised and then go up to mm -hmm. the heart. In these cases, if it is a shunt, then it completely bypasses the liver. So um, all the nutrients go straight up to the heart, straight to the brain, around again. So then they start to get neurological problems. Um, and then they can start having weight loss. They don't grow very well. They can start having seizures. So um, if it is just down to nutrition, then really within the next 24, 48 hours, you'd expect her to really start perking up and you'd expect her to be ravenous. So Nala will need tests to check if it's a liver shunt as suspected. The good news is she's still here. She's still fighting, she's still trying. All right, I'll go and grab one of the hospital nurses and we'll get her set up. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Hey. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Now, hopefully I'll see her bombing around the place at some point. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of work to do now to go and try and find out why she's got in the state in the first place. We'll catch up with poor Nala later. Earlier, we met Tippy and Custard and saw how bad a dog's coat can get when it's not looked after properly. Come here. This way. So I'm meeting vet Bruce McCleary to find out how to keep your dog's fur looking fantastic. So, Bruce, this is Boris. Boris has got quite a nice coat here, I think. Would you say? I think he's got a beautiful coat. He's actually in really, really good condition. And then, how do you go about keeping your dog's coat in this sort of good condition? There are probably two things that we need to think about. What we feed him, because of course your food needs to be a good quality food in order to keep the coat in a good condition. And also the things that are going to happen to him from the outside, things such as fleas and other parasites, because if he gets something on his skin that's going to cause him to be itchy, then he's going to chew his skin and then probably going to take some of his fur out. So other than fleas, what other things can cause deterioration in skin and fur? We see a couple of other things quite commonly. So you've got to think of mange. Classically, that's going to be the fox mange that people talk about. That's quite an itchy disease, so very often you'll find your dogs actually scratching quite a lot. 
Then apart from the parasites, we get a lot of dogs that have got allergic skin. So much like where you'd get hay fever from an allergy, very often your dog will actually get an itchy skin from it. Um, you'll notice a change very often because sometimes dogs with allergies start chewing, particularly on their feet, licking their bellies, and sometimes, of course, those dogs will also get ear problems at the same time. And it's a, just a sign of general good health if you've got a lovely coat like this. Oh, absolutely. You know, you've always got to think, does my dog actually look good? Because if you're not looking good, you're probably not that healthy on the inside. I know you've noticed. I try to keep myself together, but it shows. Thanks, Bruce. That's most instructive. Boris, you're a wonderful dog, but not a great example of terrible skin. No, he does have <laughs> amazing skin. Hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully it stays that way and someone will come and take you home, won't they? Boris's coat looks great, but the same can't be said for Tippy and Custard when they were rescued. For the past six weeks, they've been getting looked after at Wirral Animal Centre by animal care assistant Mandy Martin. Eddie, come. Good girl. Good girl. Who's been giving them medicated baths for mange. This just helps along with the steroids that are on with their skin condition. And as you can see, it's become less inflamed already and we've actually got the hair growing back. So they get this once a week, and they do, they're both really good. They're the only dogs I know that we've not had to clip up. They just stand there. Good girl. Good girl. Today, their favourite inspector, Anthony, is dropping by to see how their recovery is going. Oh, we got... Is that? Is that? Oh, girls, look at you two. You still... Still got a long way to go, I think. Look much better though, don't they? Oh yeah, that skin settled right down. Sometimes the, the fur doesn't fully grow back, does it? But I envisage within a couple of months, I think we'll have nice glossy coats. Oh. That's one notable, noticeable thing right now, is the smell's gone. Yeah, That yeah. secondary infection sort of yeasty smell that comes with, with mange. Even going, just, even going into the room was unbearable. It took me days to get out of the smell out of my van. They're both doing really good. The meds are right down. Baths and steroids. Very nice, thank you. That's, really That's nice. where we're up to with them now. That's brilliant. You know, even just the behavioural differences is miraculous, really. Yeah. And I think they're going to go on now. Strength to strength, aren't you? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's lovely. Aren't you, girl? Hey. Hey, tips. Hey, tips. Both dogs are looking so much better. but there's been a sinister discovery for poor Custard. She's got a growth and needs emergency surgery from vet Becky McAlpine. Well done. So they've noticed a lump um, in her mammary area, so in her breast tissue, um, and it's cancerous. Um, so today we're going to remove all of her breast tissue on one side. It's a major procedure for Custard. Um, so here's the lump, and it's only small, but they, they can be quite aggressive, these tumours, so it's better to take them out when they're this size. And you see that there's some discharge coming out of the nipple, um, so it's affecting the ducts as well. So that's why we just take this all out. With Custard prepped for her big op, it's time for Becky to perform the mastectomy. So I'm going to make an incision um, around all these nipples and around this lump here, and then remove all the, the skin and the nipples and then the tissue that's underneath them as well, just in case there's any little bits of tumour that have got there. I'll just start at one end and make my way along. It's a large area that needs cutting, so if you're squeamish like me, you might want to look away now. So I'm going to start this end where the lump is, just see the lump there poking through. So I'm just going to go underneath that, um, avoiding the blood vessels, and start moving my way along and get that out. OK, so now we just need to get the rest of it off, and we're there. The tumour is out, but there's still work to do. And just like with us, the less time is spent under anaesthetic, the better for custard. So the lump's down at this end, but because we're taking out the whole chain of the breast tissue, so like with, with a person having a mastectomy, it's the same thing, so you just take all the breast tissue out on that side. So take it all off in one go, in, as in one strip. 
With the tissue removed, Custer's now been on the operating table for almost two hours and Becky's ready to stitch her up. Okay, Jan. Okay, good. Let's turn her off. Turn her off. Thank you very much. The results from the breast tissue should be back from the lab in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Custard's going to have one impressive scar. <laughs> Have you got your head? I'm taking the rest of the things. OK. There is always a chance that there's a few tumour cells that are still lurking there. Hopefully we've got them all, but you can't guarantee it. Fingers crossed, Custard is given the all clear. Now let's see how Nala, the poor little Shih Tzu, is doing. It's been almost two weeks since Inspector Jackie Miller rescued critically ill Nala. Today, she's been called in to see her by the vet. I spoke to me yesterday and she'd had a bit of a funny turn. It was just such a setback. Tuesday, when I saw her, she come running into the into the consult room on, on our lead, and she was barking at me. She keeps sort of getting to the point of, like, we're all very elated that she's, like, doing well, but then she goes downhill again, and um, she, just, she just gives her, gives her so much joy and then just <laughs> so much pain at the same time. And it's not just Jackie who's been touched by this little dog's struggle. She's definitely pulling on everyone's heartstrings in the vets. And no one wants to no one wants to give up on her and we don't want her to give up on life. And everyone's just willing her to keep going. It's been confirmed that Nala has a liver condition that will need an operation. But at the moment, she's not strong enough for surgery. Vet George Giannopoulos has been looking after her. Hello, monkey! <laughs> This is not how you were supposed to be this morning. Oh, she's been barking lovely. All right, sweetheart. Oh, she's still really dog. quite Yes, she's though. quite lethargic. She's been like this, as we discussed, since yesterday. She's been closely monitored, and uh, definitely sh she's shown some uh, new lovely signs since this morning, because when we talked this morning, she was quite yeah. unwell. You're still a little fighter. Oh, you know? she is, absolutely is. I don't want to give up on her. I think uh, we've got some decent chances mm -hmm. of getting her back to normal. She has already shown us that she can do she it. She can do it yeah. exactly. And at this point, all the actual problems are basically under um, st the stable. Mm -hmm. But uh, are we out of the woods? Of course not. But this it's like it's I'm... just because our little body, isn't it? Our little body was so far shutting down. Absolutely. It's just going to take so much to get absolutely. Her back up to that, absolutely. that point. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think she can fight back, mm -hmm. but if she can't and if she starts being severely unwell, you know that we will yeah. discuss further. Yeah. But at this time, I think she can, she can do more. She can do more than that. Can you, darling? Huh? You can. Can you not? She's lovely. She just pulls on my heartstrings. She's still really, really ill. Nala's definitely stolen the hearts of both George and Jackie. I will see you on the beach in Wheatley Bay next summer. Hmm? <laughs> Is that right? We'll take her to South Shields first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep going. Um, and we'll keep going to that point where she needs her operation um, to get her that, you know, strong enough for that to happen. And then after that, she's got a really, really good prognosis that she can live a normal life once she's had that. I want to be standing here with a big, massive smile on my face this time next week. We'll check in on Nala later. Also coming up, we catch up with Rex, who survived starvation to come to the rescue of his new owner. He was borderline a euthanasia case when he came in. He was that badly emaciated. And if your home's just crying out for a rescue dog, we could have the one for you. Such a clever dog, aren't you? Good boy. 
Earlier this series, we met Rex. As you can see, he's got such severe muscle wasting. There's nothing here at um, all, is That there? he's so weak, he doesn't have much to support his weight. He was rushed to Harmsworth Hospital. He was borderline a euthanasia case when he came in. Rex was just skin and bone and too weak to stand on his own. You know, I was really worried about the first yeah. 24, 48 hours or whether or not he'd actually make it. Fast forward three months and Rex has a new life with vet nurse Gail Fountain and her husband Steve. We instantly fell in love, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did, yeah. He, he was just amazing. Well, he struck up with us in a relationship with us straight away, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like he was already ours. <laughs> yeah, we've rescued two or three, haven't we, in the past? Uh, probably more than that. More than that, yeah. 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 Not, all, not all this naughty. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Rex is now called Ravi, and he's joined a family of three other pooches, fellow rescue dogs Jake and Gabs and nine-year-old Rotty Mastiff Cross Keeley. G's been good for him to teach him some boundaries that you can't just jump all over everyone and steal everyone's toys and food. eat their food. Yeah. Yeah. He's got bags and bags of character, and it's almost like he's, he knows it as well. Yeah. And he's, he quite often tries to make you laugh just doing soppy things, you know. Um, sometimes he gets on the table. Naughty boy. You need a kiss. Kiss, I don't know why he does that. <laughs> just to make us laugh, I guess. Cheeky Ravi also has his gentle, loving side, and he's definitely a cuddly mummy's boy. Oh, nice. That's nice. <laughs> oh. I generally spend a couple of hours on the sofa with him on a daily basis. Um, I've been having some chemotherapy. That's why there's a connection there for me and him. Our healing time, this is. I love all of my dogs equally, but he brings something different. It's like he knows that he needs to be soft and gentle with me at times. <laughs> my precious boy. Dolly. Big softy Ravi is now at a healthy weight. Ready, Rav? And able to enjoy his daily exercise. Yeah! <laughs> it's hard to believe that just a few months ago, this bouncy lad could barely stand on his own. Yeah, he likes running around with the dogs. He likes meeting new dogs. Yeah, he's, he's just a happy boy. Whatever yeah, he's, he's just... doing, he's a happy boy. He's got them all going recently as well. He's knocked a few years off the rest of the dogs, I think. It's a fantastic result for Ravi and for Gail and Steve too. He's such a valued member of our family. Somebody's missed out big time. He's done you the world of good, hasn't he? He's been the power of strength for me, yeah. Yeah. They say you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. And uh, hopefully he's the, we're the owners he needed. Yeah. We're glad to say that Gail is now in remission and is back at work. That's what I call a happy ever after. And the future also looks bright for Custard after her mastectomy. Animal care assistant Michelle Hayward is the bearer of good news. We got the results back and thankfully um, the results come back as benign, which means she is cancer free um, and she's gonna go on and to live a long, happy life. She's absolutely recovered remarkably after such major surgery. And um, we expected her to be quite quiet and quite upset. She never has been. She's always just wanted to get out and play. For Playful Custard, it's a new lease of life. Of course, we're going to be absolutely thrilled when she finds a, a family of her, her own because she absolutely deserves to. Um, but we are all going to miss her. Both Custard and Tippy, who was rescued with her, are hoping to find their forever home soon. Their original owners have been banned from keeping dogs for five years and given a 12-month community order. They're just brilliant dogs. They've really come out the shell and they're going to make really good companions for someone.
But sadly, there's tragic news about little Nala the Shih Tzu. She battled for her life for four weeks. But in the end, she just wasn't strong enough to survive her condition. It's a horrible, horrible ending that, that she had. But we know that we we tried everything that we could, you know. She had a long way to fight, that little dog, unfortunately. Our little body just couldn't cope. But there has been some justice for poor Nala. Her owner has been traced and prosecuted for failing to meet Nala's needs. She was fined and banned from keeping animals for five years. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Good boy, well done. Good boy. Here we have Stanley, he's two year old, he's a crossbreed, and he's been at Block Fen with us for three months. Hello, boy, good boy. He does get very stressed in the kennels, but once he gets in the home, I think he'll settle in well. Good boy. Other good boy. It's said that he's here in kennels for so long, I've bonded with him quite well, and it's quite nice to be with him, but he needs that home where he can just be a nice, happy dog, and learn what being in a home is really like rather than in kennels. Stanley's looking for a home, an adult household only. He'd prefer a home with no animals just because he wants all the attention to himself. He'd rather have human contact where they're going to love him and spend most of their time with him. Good boy. <laughs> Stanley deserves a nice family and lovely home where he's going to brighten up anyone's day. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come on, here we go. Come on, sweetheart. Two skinny dogs living in grim conditions. Their lives are transformed with the help of animal welfare officer Matt Brown. I can't tell what that type of dog is. It's that thing. I can tell you're a bit upset about this. It's an emotional sign over for three scared sisters with work to be done to bring them out of their shells. She's quite shy, so just building a confidence and then she will go up for rehoming. And meet raccoon dog Cedric. That's right, raccoon dog. Has he met the love of his life? She's doing some nice displaying. Um, he seems slightly less interested. Yeah. <laughs>